us this morning. She's got our Brian Insurance Tip of the Week. Can you insure a kid against fear of clowns? Uh, no, probably not. But okay. one of my best friends that Rick was talking about is terrified of them. And I, we didn't know it. And we went to a haunted house one time. And she ran out of her shoe and a scary clown picked it up and wouldn't give it back to her. He was petting it, acting like he was petting it. We got outside and she passed out. It was awful. Oh, wow. And yeah. she loves donuts, but I would never do that to her. That would not be, <laughs> that wouldn't be cool. I, and she said she always has been. She just, she's scared of them. Nothing happened to yeah. make her scared of them. So. I know it's a thing with people because I have seen it. And what a match for in Sydney. Mm-hmm. The same way. We, had, we were at a place, uh, we had to pick her up. I had to throw her over my shoulder and carry her out because she could not walk. Because of the clowns. Because of the clowns. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Oh, well, all right. I'll, I've heard of it, but just through that one kid, and then I've, I've never heard of it again until you yeah. brought it up. Mm -hmm. But we, but it is, it's crazy. Huh. But, yeah, she's she works at Brian Insurance, and so I'll have to tell her to listen and... That, but she doesn't live in Graham, but maybe she was listening. We gave her a shout out, but not for a good reason. But I can tell you a bunch of good stuff about her too. But anyway, that's not what we're going to talk about today, though. You know, with all the lot, the stuff that's going on in our world, you would probably think that cyber liability, you know, hacking, that kind of thing would be the biggest claim. But do you, I want y'all to guess what the biggest liability claim was in 2017 as far as number and amounts of claims for homeowners. I would say something to do with the weather. Like well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm talking about liability, not oh, property, oh, but liability. liability. Uh -huh. Oh, tripping on your doorstep or something no. on the brick, no? It's a good guess, but that's not it. Maybe uh, something like damages at your house are causing people to be hurt. Oh, okay, so it's dog bites, is that not crazy? You know, the fa <laughs> my favorite, there was a famous Houston lawyer that says, prove that that dog belonged to me. And I thought, what a great excuse or a great defense mm -hmm. was, yeah, there's nothing that the dog showed up. I fed it, but uh, I don't own it. Unless you have veterinarian records or yeah. it has a collar with your phone number on it or I don't know. But no, it, <laughs> I'm just saying. And, to, and I love dogs. I'm just reporting the news. I'm not saying yeah. that I'm because yeah. we love our little dog and she might bite, but she doesn't bite hard enough to hurt. But uh, in, I don't know. I might <laughs> see the owner. In 2017, there were 4.7 million dog bites, and 800,000 of those resulted in medical cares. Dog bites and related injuries account for one-third of homeowners' liability claims and totaled $700 million in 2017. That's crazy. And the average award for a personal injury lawsuit on a dog bite is $789,000. What? Yeah. Man, I'm going to go walking around with sticks tied on well, my yeah. Can I come over to your house? Well, it gets, it gets well, more interesting. Last what's your dog's name, the Chihuahua? Nacho. Nacho, Nacho. Nacho that's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, Nacho dog, if he, she, she bites anybody. <laughs> in, August, in August of this year in Pennsylvania, uh, an employee filed a, dog's, a lawsuit against her employer, Home Depot because uh, they allowed a a customer to bring their dog into the store while they were shopping and the dog bit the employee. And she mm -hmm. sued her employer and her supervisor for putting her in that situation. And of course that's still, we'll see how that one comes. But you know, you think about it because it is becoming more common for businesses to let people bring their animals into their stores. and But then that business could become liable if somebody gets hurt so it's something to think, so think about if i brought my service pig <laughs> yeah <laughs> into some place and it bit somebody does well, it bite it bit me does she bite? bit me bite Sonya. really i only gave her a chance to bite me yeah, once but, but i think mm -hmm. he's training her to do that now, it was when we first got her <laughs> and he was cleaning her cage and he, and he wanted me to hold her and she bit me on the finger because she wanted down and i let her down because it hurt i didn't even know she had teeth yet but okay, but yeah, in a early and then earlier this month, a toddler in North Carolina was hospitalized after he was bit by a dog. I mean, it, you still hear about this. Uh, there was a dog in Canada that uh, bit a 50 year old woman and a toddler, and the woman actually died from the bite. So, I mean, you know, it, it can be serious. So, I just thought it would be something to talk about because, like I said, we always tend to think about this high tech stuff, but things like dog bites still happen. And so, if you're a, a homeowner, you need to make sure that there's not any kind of, if you have any kind of animal, but especially a dog that 
may or may not bite someone. I mean, I guess any dog could bite someone, but you need to make sure your homeowner's insurance doesn't have an exclusion on the policy. It's not common for them to have one, but it could. So ask. Uh, some companies, you know, have a list of breeds that if you own they, one of those kind of dogs, they won't insure you. You know, some of them are Rottweilers, Doberman Pinchers, uh, wolf hybrids. Remember we had the friends that had the wolf oh, yeah. hybrid, yeah, hmm. which were really cool, but kind of scary if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then as far as the business, your general liability policy typically would pay if for whatever reason, you know, someone gets bit on your premises and you're found liable. However, what it would not, what it won't cover is if you have, uh, you know, it damages your reputation, for example, like say if, if this Home Depot thing goes crazy, you know, and people, for whatever reason, quit going to that store, there's not insurance that would cover that. So you just need to be really careful and not just insurance, but in risk management to make sure that you think about all that ahead of time. So if you have a business and you're going to allow animals to be brought into your business, just think about the things that you can do, um, whether it's you want to have documented policies to protect people if you're allowing your employees to bring their pets you should probably have some kind of documentation of the rules and that kind of thing and of course just the basic stuff on your personal make sure that your dogs have their shots you know make sure that if, if they do maybe get scared around new people that they're in some place where they can't get to other people like in your backyard or whatever so it's basic stuff but i just thought it was interesting that of all these things that we're seeing that dog bites are still right up wow. there with one That's of the top cool. yeah all right, so. Sonia, thank you so much. Sure. How do we get a hold of you? You can call us at 940-549-2525. Come see us, second floor Sierra Bank Building, or visit us at www.brian.com. Very good. Hey, we've got some uh, things you need to know brought to us by McGillicuddy's.